I will just give a broad picture of what a student studying physics at APU uh, might expect to encounter. So uh, all the standard subjects and again uh, uh, actually I have the advantage of borrowing from the previous speakers. So borrowing from Rahul, uh, physics uses mathematics but it's not that physics is mathematics. It's, and borrowing from uh, Divya, if you're curious, she said about the living world and let me just say if you're curious about the whole world living, non-living and so on, then maybe physics uh, uh, might be of interest to you. So uh, physicists are interested in biology, she mentioned that, but they may also be interested in the planet on which these people live or the star ar around which this planet goes. So the why physics uh, partly comes from that broad curiosity, but also comes from the fact that you increasingly encounter physics in the world around us. So underlying uh, these applications, either to the natural world or the man-made world, are these core subjects which I have listed out uh, and uh, like the other programs you heard about, uh, particularly humanities, uh, you can branch out through electives. As I said, physics is standard, but uh, the way uh, we conduct the program, we would like to think is a little different uh, because physics can so easily become, as uh, does happen sometimes in the 11th and 12th standard and even beyond, a kind of ritual where you have a standard formulae and standard problems, and you plug them in. Uh, and you have also standard experiments in the lab and very standard applications, okay? Uh, I mean, even, uh, I guess I went through a similar uh, program, so I can't criticize it. But uh, today, perhaps, one can do better. The main thing is not to make it a ritual, to make it something that the students are really engaged in, uh, and that they see its uh, relevance not just to getting a degree. So uh, there's a project component uh, right from the beginning. Okay? So even in the assessment part, I mean, you were told <laughs> there were no exams, but uh, another way of stating it is that we examine you continuously. <laughs> and I guess one way in which uh, we consciously decided to be different from the beginning was that uh, uh, physics can quickly take off into a lot of maths and a lot of theory and just paying lip service to the experiment. But a discipline which claims that it describes the real world should uh, engage with the real world. And, uh, uh, and it's not just the natural world, the world of technology. So the very uh, first semester, you would get into uh, introduction to physics, both the theory side and the labs. And the labs are not uh, routine. Uh, in fact, in the very first year lab, people, you know, within a few weeks, they are estimating the diameter of molecules. Uh, actually, just by putting a drop of oil in water, which is quite remarkable. Okay. And uh, the other interesting thing is that uh, it's very tempting to buy ready-made apparatus and then you just plug and play, so to speak. But uh, thanks to some of my colleagues who are very good at it, a lot of the apparatus is actually built. And the students actually see uh, the machines, whether it be a 3D printer or a lathe. I would also like to mention computation. You traditionally think of physics as having experiment uh, and theory. But now uh, computation has sort of come in between these two. Uh, the experiments are getting so complicated and uh, just to run the experiment or to uh, process the data properly, you need a computer. The theories are not getting any simpler and uh, therefore uh, you would need computers to translate those uh, physical laws into predictions and applications, okay? So uh, our program, we do emphasize uh, the role of computation and uh, it's important to strengthen the maths basics uh, for any discipline. And actually more than one is actual content, the other is confidence, because sometimes the job of maths teachers seems to be to destroy confidence in the school level, right? And so we try to build it up again, and it really helps. Es establishing all, all uh, this base generates a sort of common language so that the latest courses don't suffer for the lack of mathematics. There's an important component which is coming up, I think, for the first time for this batch called interdisciplinary studies. And uh, we hope to play a role in that because after all, uh, the kind of things you heard about, uh, climate change, energy, and modeling and so on, uh, do involve uh, physics. So just a glimpse of uh, laboratories. Uh, university has uh, given general support to build up the laboratories. And uh, as I said, it's not just the standard simple pendulum and so on. Uh, for example, Brownian motion, uh, the phenomenon which led Einstein to one of his famous discoveries, uh, 
is it can be seen by our students in the very first year how tiny particles move around under a microscope there's an excellent microscopy facility which one of my colleagues uses for her research and uh, students can use it for projects the faculty of the physics group have come from different places and that's an advantage each one of us has contacts in some place and we are able to uh, arrange for our students to do internships there in a typical year in the physics program the student and I'm sure in other programs as well students would encounter lots of interesting events okay which occur so workshops for teachers you heard about an undergraduate science workshop it's going to happen a science day a lab day. and we have a science seminar series where we bring in uh, people not just from other places in bangalore in fact uh, we prefer to bring in someone from far away because then the person stays a few days and interacts with the students right so these are all things that our students benefit from uh, apart from courses so outcomes is really what are these students doing uh, a similar list to what you've seen from my colleagues uh, people study physics at home and abroad uh, but uh, some of the students in the first batches uh, were exposed to education and development and they liked it so much i hope it's not because of dislike of physics that uh, they actually went on to pursue these subjects at the Azim Premji University or elsewhere. You know, one might learn computation, maths and statistics uh, in order uh, to see how they're applied in physics, but at some point you may fall in love with that and move on to do that rather than uh, study higher physics. And uh, one of our first batch students did exactly that. And I'm, I'm really interested in finding out uh, what our student who has gone on to do forensic science is going to do. She's probably come back and investigate us. And, and uh, a few uh, reasonable number do take this option of a gap year. Because again, in common with what you've heard from all my colleagues, uh, this program actually enables you to find yourself, find your interests. And uh, you might actually want to take a little more time uh, to uh, explore a couple of options. Uh, in fact, I've just been corresponding with uh, one of our fresh graduates. So she first did uh, some theory of glaciers, then she actually went on top of a glacier. And now she wants to apply to atmospheric science as well, right? So the gap year sometimes helps. Of course, it's also true that some people are very clear what they want to do and they go straight ahead. 